1,000 subscribers. Three years of doing this show, and I finally crossed over my first real threshold. To celebrate such an occasion, I had asked you guys to name and vote what book you wanted me to review the most. Except Goosebumps, cause seriously people, I do those in October, and I'm not even sure if I'm doing it this year. What was that? Anyway, you guys voiced out, and here we are. I hope you enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. Sit back and relax as we dive into The Neverending Story by Michael N. I love books. I've expressed that many times throughout this show, and one of my favorite places to go in the entire world is a bookstore. Duh. Used, new, or just a small section in a drugstore, I love exploring what stories they have to offer and what catches my interest. I can spend hours just looking at books, and where does the never-ending story start? In a bookstore, of course. A quiet little shop filled with stories just waiting to be told to any who enter. So? Suddenly, the door was opened so violently that a little cluster of brass bells twinkled wildly, taking quite some time to calm down. The cause of this hubbub was a fat little boy of 10 or 12. But this little boy of 10 or 12 is not welcome at this bookstore. As far as I'm concerned, they're no good for anything but screaming, torturing people, breaking things, smearing books with jam, and tearing the pages. Anyway, I have no children's books, and I wouldn't sell you the other kind. So now we understand each other, I hope? Well, aren't you just a barrel of fun? While most kids would have left this ass behind, this one speaks back. All children aren't like that. The kid introduces himself as Bastion Balthasar Box, and he didn't mean to run into the bookstore. He was actually running away from some bullies because he's this fat little weakling who doesn't fight back. But he's not a teacher's pet either. He's mostly average, just passing by. And his mother just passed away while his father no longer gives him any attention from his own melancholy. Good lord, cried Mr. Corrender. A failure all along the line. Dude! Yeah, it's kind of hard not to see Bastion as a failure. What good has he put into the world? However, Bastion's running into the bookstore was no accident. When the owner is taking a phone call, Bastion notices a book he was reading. For some reason, he finds himself being pulled towards it and touches it. In that moment, something inside him went click, as though a trap had shut. Bastion had a vague feeling that touching the book had started something irrevocable, which would now take its course. And the name of the book? is the never-ending story. Which Bastion cannot believe exists. A story that never ends. He's always had a passion for books, and with that idea in mind, he steals the book before the owner finds out. Remember, he said he wasn't going to sell him anything. However, Bastion realizes he's become a thief and doesn't know what to do. He doesn't want to go to school because of the bullies. He can't go home because his father is working there. He can't go anywhere. So he decides to run away by hiding in the school attic. Now no one could possibly find him. No one would look for him here. The place was seldom used. He was pretty sure of that. And even if, by chance, someone had something to do in the attic today or tomorrow, he would simply find the door locked. With nothing left to do, he takes out the book and starts to read the never-ending story. And what story does it have to tell? The story focuses on the land of Fantasia, a world where all forms of strange creatures live, a place of imagination. But something's happening to the land. Well, not something but a nothing. Denizens of Fantasia are seen, or rather not seen, the land just disappearing, and in its place is... NOTHING! ABSOLUTELY NOTHING! But no one knows what this nothing is. None of us could imagine what this terrible thing might be, what caused it, and what we could do about it. And seeing that it didn't go away by itself, but kept spreading, <laughs> That. We finally decided to send a messenger to the childlike empress to ask her for advice and help. However, everyone in Fantasia is trying to talk to the childlike empress, but they can't. The childlike empress, said the tiny in an undertone, is ill. 
very ill, and no one knows what she is ill with. They do know that her illness must be connected to this nothing, but no one knows what to do. Then, a great medicine man is asked to bring the most prized item in all of Fantasia, Oran, to a boy named Atreyu, for he, the childlike empress says, is the hero who will save Fantasia. How? No one knows. But with Arwen, Atreyu goes to figure out how to save his world. But while Bastion is reading his many adventures, he notices the characters seem to notice him. But that's impossible. It's only a story. Just words printed on paper. But was it only a story? How did it happen that Yergamol, and probably Atreyu as well, had heard Bastion's cry of terror? Little by little, this book was beginning to give him a spooky feeling. While that is the basic plot, which I'm sure if you watched the famous 80s film, sounds like a note-for-note -note telling of the story, but that plot line is only half of what the never-ending story is. There is a lot, and I mean a lot in this book to love. One is at the beginning of each chapter, you get these nice pictures in order of the alphabet, with the letter being part of the first word of that chapter. So, A is for all, B for because, C for Chiron, and so on. But it also has a nice trick to separate the real world from the fantasy world by having two different color texts, red for real and green for fantasy. Touches like these add a lot into what the story is trying to do. Show the power of stories. This book is in love with books. There are many moments it just takes a step back to think about the philosophy of books. I wonder, he said to himself, what's in a book while it's closed? Oh, I know it's full of letters printed on paper, but all the same, something must be happening because as soon as I open it, there's a whole world with people I didn't know yet and all kinds of adventures and deeds and battles. All those things are somehow shut up in a book. Of course you have to read it to find out, but it's already there. That's the funny thing. I just wish I knew how it could be. But this is more for a case of imagination in stories. There's a whole segment where Bastion laments his disgust with humdrum books talking about the real world. What Michael N did was show the power of imagination, how we need imagination, and what imagination can do both the good and the bad. Slight spoiler, but if you know how the movie goes, you know how the first half of the book goes. But the second half features Bastion and Fantasia and the journey he goes to grow as a human being, showcasing the good and bad of escapism. If anything, this is one of the closest examples of The Wizard of Oz I've read. A lot of the chapters can be episodic, but there's a constant theme throughout like Oz. And a story like this reminds me why I love books in the first place. I've been reading books since as far back as I can remember. And the feeling Bastion has for stories, and in turn Michael N, matches my own. Imaginative Stories gives us so much, not only in escapist entertainment, but to help us come across complex ideas, to examine who we are, or just to remind people how fun fantasy is. I don't think you need to hear me say you need to read this book. But when you do pick it up, there is a magic about the whole thing that reminds me why I, or anyone, has a love for books. And even though this story does end, the magic lives on in all stories that follow after. Because every story is a never-ending story. Cheesy as hell, but so is the film! What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about the never-ending story? A special thanks to all of you for supporting me over the years. If you have other suggestions, let me know in the comments below. And maybe I'll do another vote if I reach 2,000 subscribers. Hey, a guy can dream. So, what do we have for next... <laughs> Straight from the heavens to the bowels of hell. Till next time, have a nice day.